Welcome everyone to the second version or second uh, part of um, creating watersheds using ArcGIS 10 and in this part we will start we, uh, with the results of the first part and so we have already a flow accumulation raster we have a flow direction raster we have a recalculated STM and we also have due to some kind of um, representation a Landsat image available. So what we will do today we will create for each possible pool point maybe no, no for each good pool point I think um, representing watershed um, represented by a polygon and we will also create not only flow accumulation raster types but also um, auto auto calculated streams. So just stay with me. What we will need for this uh, purpose is um, a tool called Arc Hydra Tools, and this is available on the on an FTP server from Esri. Uh, I will type this into the comment section of that video. There's a final version. You should always stick with something called final. Um, and this is archhydrotools.msi. Just download that, uh, install it. Hope everything will f works fine. Otherwise, I will, I will also also present you a link on the installation procedure for Arc for archhydrotools. And um, after after um, installation, you will be able to choose uh, in the toolbars the Archhydra tools. This is already done here, so these are the Archhydra tools, which is normally it is a little bit bigger. Let's say like this. Well, the, wait a second, like this. And um, there are things called terrain pro pre processing, terrain morphology, morphology, watershed processing, and so on. What we'll do. We will first of all. We, we what are we interested in? We have to ask ourselves that every time. So we are interested in getting streams and rivers, and not only flow accumulation rasters where each pixel is, uh, represents a number of pixels draining into that pixel. Well, this is quite fine, but uh, we need streams. We need our rivers. So let's go into detail um, and let's have a look here. So there's something like like a, a stream represented by these high values and there's also a little stream coming up from the southeastern part here but the, yeah these are not streams these are just flow accumulation rests so um when we will pick the value here flow accumulation is here zero so let's go a little bit into into detail No, this was not as good. So go here again and say, well, oh yeah, eighty-three thousand pixels are down drowning into that pixel, and maybe there's also maybe there's also something like a stream over there. But I think, and I've been to that area b before. Um, a stream may be, may be visible here in this area. So there's a little river going through the valley maybe. Let's have a look here. Oh, well, it should be very little. So let's fetch that value once again. This is now 92,000. So, well, let's say there could be a stream in that area uh, after 100,000, maybe 150,000. Let's go back. But what I know for sure is that there was a river. So go back again, get the value. Well, 173,000. So let's stick with the 150,000 as some kind of more or less value. So what we will do now, we will concentrate on the flow accumulation raster and divide it into areas where this this threshold value is. Um, left behind so 
values above 150,000 and values beneath 150,000. So let's go into terrain preprocessing. There's a thing called stream definition, which is more or less just a if or else statement on the flow accumulation raster. So we will say 150,000 is our threshold value. No, that was one zero too much. So there we go. And this is re representing uh, 1,200 square kilometers, so an area about 30, to, uh, 30 times 40 kilometers. Yeah, I would like to recalc or rewrite that. I've done it prior. And so what is done now is it's just an else statement. So it says 1, there is a stream, and 0, there's no stream. So there we go. And as you can see, there's our stream, and if we are zooming out a little bit there's no stream great so um, what has happened there's no data available in that area stream no data and you can see there's a flow accumulation value of zero same as here over over here zero and no data but what is interesting is if you're uh, going into into areas where what where there are high values but not high enough values there's still no data available. This is one thing. The other thing is you would like to segment it. So if there are two rivers joining each other, then it should be represented maybe by the raster. So it's not only one and one meeting to one, maybe one and two meeting to three. Something like you you, you have learned in, in, in um, college. So, yeah. Let's go with that and say terrain preprocessing. There's something like a segmentation, stream segmentation. So we have a flow direction raster grid. We have the stream grid. We don't need a sink watershed grid and sink link grid, but we will create a stream link grid. It's already there. So let's go with that. That's um, it's very fast, uh, as you can see. Now we have a stream link. Let's have a look here into. The Details. So each stream is represented by by um by a value. You can see the values. So there are 21 streams in my area, and each stream uh, has a different color due to the color scheme. So you can also have a look on the attribute table. So the numbers of pixels belonging to that stream. So number one has 968 pixels. So you get an idea about the length of the stream now. You know that each pixel has 90 meters um, times 90 meters. So if you know now uh, the numbers of pixels, you know the, num uh, the length of the stream. Let's zoom to that. And now, oh no, you cannot see anything. So let's go into detail once again. So there are the streams now. And what we will do now is we will calculate no, that's the wrong one. We will calculate something like a catchment grid delineation. Because we know now each stream, we can calculate the upslope area for that stream. So we'll use catchment grid delineation. We have a flow direction grid, which is quite the importance here. We have the link grid, and we'll calculate our catchment grid. So the catchment grid is more or less the whole area and each pixel will get a number um, regarding its catchment. So then you have about 21 possible numbers around the uh, around the uh, DEM and each pixel is therefore belonging to one watershed. Just take some time. So what we will do now is, um, or after the calculation process is completed, um, we will have a look on the catchment grid now. Okay, so, well, flashy colors. Let's zoom to the whole layer. And there you go. So you're having now the catchments for each uh, area. And so let's go into uh, the detail here. So let's have a look on the Orchon River, which is this system here. There you have it. Orchon River starts over here. 
we'll make this a little bit uh, visible to us so transparency is set to 50% and there we go so there is this catchment going up through the mountains and uh, but this is still just raster data so what we will do now is we will use the catchment polygon processing therefore you need just a catchment grid and you will have a new polygon file after that and um, it has also it is not only raster to, to polygon co uh, calculation or processing it is also a processing of um, area calculation and I think shape length what we will see that in a moment so there we are these are the catchments let's have a look into the HBO table so there you have a shape length and a shape area also a hydro ID and a grid ID which is the same in this case so this is really nice to have so let's zoom to the whole layer and there are the several catchments so what you can do now is you can calculate statistics on the area you can calculate statistics on the, on, on the shape length you can join polygon to uh, polygons to one catchment grid so what is possible in our case to reduce the critical size of the catchment to um, not 150,000 pixels, but maybe 100,000 pixels. So the uh, the catchments will be very s uh, much smaller, and then you can aggregate afterwards. So you can uh, just join each uh, each polygon with another, or merge them to one uh, grid or one catchment. And what is the last thing we will do? We will use the term preprocessing once again to calculate a drainage line. So we have the stream link grid, and there's a flow direction grid, and we will calculate the drainage line. So it, it is only a line feature or line shape file, uh, which represents the river afterwards. But nevertheless, it's not only processing of a raster to line feature but it's also doing some calculation on the on the length of the feature I think and has some information about the stream grid number and some meter information as well so let's wait for a second it's really fast so it is storing the all the shape files and all the layers in a geodatabase so it's not in a folder and is not a shape file. So after processing, you should always go with uh, the exporting function to a shape file or to a raster file to create a persistent uh, persistent file uh, representation of that. So there we are. This is a drainage line. Let's go into that. There is a line. Uh, let's have a look into the attribute table. There we are, so the shape polyline, there's the ID value from node to node. So where are the nodes between these uh, grids, which is quite important for, um, for, um, for what could it be important? Well, well, for hydra hydraulic calculations afterwards. So where is the river going from which node to another? Then you have a shape length and also the grid ID from the corresponding um, water show and uh, catchment. So this is it. So I would like to show you how to export that. So data. Do, 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 do. It's a little bit lame. Export data. And then just go with all features and say yeah, that you would like to use a data frame maybe and uh, well these are the lines or the drainage lines dot shape yeah I would like to present it so it's the same but now we have a shape file after that and um, in the first case there was only water.gdb so it's also um, 
the feature data set in the in the in the geo database but now we have a s um, distinct file i hope this was um, good enough for you guys thank you very much for watching and if you would like to yeah do something for me maybe just click on some kind of advertisement in the clip that would be really great from you um, it will give me some money afterwards um, to hold up my tutorials here um, in any case just drop me a line or write a comment click on I like or something else to promote my videos I would really appreciate that thank you very much for watching goodbye